So it's great that we're now storing meetups here in our collection, but of course we're not using those stored meetups. If we go to all meetups, I still display my dummy meetups. The same for the details page. Here we would now want to fetch data from MongoDB as well. And of course we could now create new API routes. We could create an API route called meetups and in there we add this handler function, we connect to MongoDB and we then write code that fetches all the meetups. And then on the starting page in get static props here, we could simply use fetch and indeed Next.js adds a feature that you can use fetch on server side code as well. Normally you can only use it in the browser, but in next projects, you can use fetch in server side code snippets as well. And we could then use fetch therefore to send a request to slash API meetups, fetch all the meetups and then populate our props with those meetups. We could do that, but that would be a bit cumbersome. Sending a request to our own API endpoint here is a bit redundant. Keep in mind that I mentioned that the code you add here in get static props, just as in get server side props and get static paths, will only run on the server or during build time, but never in the client. So the code in here will also not be exposed to the client. So therefore here, if you want to fetch all meetups, we can directly write the code for doing so here instead of get static props or in a helper function, which we then execute here. So we don't need to send a request to our own API route. We can immediately execute the code just here, which then avoids this extra unnecessary request, which would be sent otherwise. So therefore here we can again import Mongo client from MongoDB and then connect to it here. Now, when you import something here in a page component file and that something is then only used in get server side props or get static props, the imported package will not be part of the client side bundle. So you can import code here, which will then only be executed on the server and Next.js will detect this and not include it in your client side bundle which is good both for bundle size considerations as well as for security. So you can import both server side and client side code here. And depending on where you use it, it will be included in different bundles, which are independent from each other. That's a nice smart feature built into Next.js. And therefore with Mongo client imported here, we can use it in get static props to again connect and now we can go to the API route and get rid of meetups.js there, by the way. And in new meetup.js, we can now in the end copy this code for establishing the connection, getting access to the database and getting access to a collection here. We could therefore also refactor this and outsource it into a separate function to avoid copying this. But here to be very explicit about which code you can execute where, I will copy it and paste it here into get static props. With that, we do connect here. And then once we did connect and once we did reach out to the meetups collection, we can use the meetups collection to call the find method there. And find will by default find all the documents in that collection. It's an async task returning a promise, which we can await here because I'm using the async keyword here. And then ultimately we'll therefore get our meetups here. To be precise, we should call to array here after find so that we get back an array of documents. Then we have this array of meetups and the meetups here, which I set in my props could now be the meetups, which I'm fetching from MongoDB. We can then also of course, close the connection again, once we're done fetching data from MongoDB before we return. And if we do that and reload this all meetups page, we get this error. This error is related to the auto generated ID. As you can see, it's not a string. It's this strange object ID thing. 
And that turns out to be a more complex object which can't be returned as data just like this. Therefore, what we actually need to do here is the meetups which we're getting from the database, we want to map this array so that we transform every meetup a little bit. And that we return an object here for every meetup where we have a title, which is meetup.title, where we have an address, which is meetup.address, where we have an image, which is meetup.image, and where we have our description maybe, though we actually don't need this here, so we can avoid description for this component because we're not outputting the description anyways on this all meetups page. But we do also add an ID field, not underscore ID, but just ID like this, because I'm using just ID like this in my front end components. And we set this equal to meetup dot underscore ID to string. And this will then convert this object to a string, which is usable. And if we convert our data like this and save everything, you will see that if we reload the starting page, this works and we see our meetups again, but that's now actually a list of meetups based on the meetup data we have in our MongoDB database, not our dummy meetups anymore. And I can prove this if I remove my dummy meetups array here, if I remove this array entirely from this index.js file, everything will still work fine if we reload this starting page. So now we are pre-rendering this page with data that's actually coming from a database. And all this code will execute whenever this page is pre-generated. So not for every incoming request, because it's not get server-side props, but get static props, but therefore during the build process and when we revalidate, then this page will be pre-rendered and this code will run again.